Hey, so I just filmed this video right here, um, but I'm refilming it because I don't think I'm going to like how it went down. Um, as I have stated before, I have this tendency whenever I am talking to just kind of go off on different subjects. Um, <clears throat> I can get very, very confused. Um, and I can be very unorganized with the way um, I am explaining. So I'm going to refilm it. Um, see if I can like this, see if I can be a little bit better with how I explain. <clears throat> and maybe I'll like this one better. Excuse me, I'm still getting over my sickness. I feel better, but I'm still really congested. So I'll edit out make um, as much as I can so there's nothing gross sounding or you know this video is going to be about my experience um, on methadone while pregnant in 2017 I was pregnant with my son <clears throat> and that's when I first decided I need to get sober and I went into treatment <clears throat> it was outpatient rehab, outpatient treatment. Um, this will not be a birth story. can be a different video. If you want to hear that, comment down below. DM me, message me. Let me know. You can message me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I have a business email linked below. You can comment on here. Let me know if you would like a birth story on methadone versus this video which is just my pregnancy on methadone because the two are very different and also postpartum on methadone um, like after I give birth on methadone so as I said in 2017 I had been using heroin and opiates at that time since 2014 so only three years that I've been at that time I had been addicted to opiates before that time I had been using cocaine, um, party drugs such as ecstasy, LSD, um, Xanax, meth, any other pill that just was not an opioid or an opiate, I, I had done. And even though I would use, I would what I consider binge use, so I would use for six months at a time, be clean for six months at a time. I had never reached a point in my addiction where <clears throat> I would steal, rob, and lie for money. I had never prostituted for money, for drugs, for coke and ecstasy. I just, if I had the money, to, I would get them and I would party. Whereas heroin, I reached a level where I would do anything for money, for drugs, anything. You name it, I did it. I had no morals. I almost had... Very, my ethics were very low, what I considered ethical, and my morals were non-existent at that time. So in 2017, I had been on a Suboxone program at the time for about six months. This would have been January 2017. I had been about six months in a Suboxone program. Although it was prescribed by a doctor, I was abusing my Suboxone. Suboxone is a medicine you can take to curb um cravings for opioids and opiates and it works by if the naloxone and the buprenorphine in suboxone if you take other opioids or opiates with um like after you've taken your suboxone or if you take suboxone after it a you may get sick going to precipitate it withdrawals or b um it will not affect you the way it normally would so for instance you will not get high the way you normally would if suboxone is in your system so I was on suboxone however if you take enough of suboxone you can get high um, or you, it'll give you some energy and you'll just feel kind of good you know what I'm saying well you probably don't know what I'm saying but it'll give you like a warm feeling in your in your belly you'll feel kind of good you know kind of like drinking a good cup of coffee and you're like able to get up and do stuff and you're happy and you just feel good um you're not going through withdrawals 
um, you just feel good. Now at this, like I said, it was January 2017. I had been on this for about six months, abusing it. I would take too much of my dose. I would take not enough of my dose. I would run out three weeks in. Um, and then like the last week and a half, two weeks of my prescription, I would have to buy Suboxone off the streets. Um, so I wasn't really using heroin at this point or other pills. I was just crazy abusing Suboxone. January 2017, I met my son's father. Um, I had, was going through a major change in my life at that moment in time where I started abusing opiates again. Um, I had an ex-boyfriend. We had been together for five years. He is the man I started using opioids with. Um, he's where I started using heroin with. And I was with him when I decided to stop doing heroin. Um, he had his own set of issues. It's not my place to talk on. He had his own demons to fight. And at that moment in time, there was a rift between us and I fell back hard. Relapsed hard. I started taking Suboxone again. I ended up getting pregnant very quickly into meeting my son's father. Um, judgment aside, uh, we knew each other about two and a half weeks and then I got pregnant. Um, that's a whole different story. <laughs> I'm not asking to be judged on that. I'm just giving you the facts. Pregnant and I didn't find out I was about just at about seven weeks. Pregnant is when I found out. So for those first seven weeks, I was using some pills, but I was also on Suboxone. Uh, or when I found out I was pregnant while I was on Suboxone, two things happened. One is I lost my job. Um, so I didn't have the income coming in the way I did, the, one, the way I once had. Number two, um, no doctor would see me and prescribe me Suboxone. I get my last prescription of Suboxone. I make that last a long time by only taking a quarter strip a day. Um, pretty much I take a quarter of my dose every day um, and I get very sick. I start going through withdrawals, fast forward a few weeks, I run out, I detox off, I am sick for two weeks, I'm still pregnant at this point. I start using from the street because I'm detoxing and I am so, so, so sick. I'm like, no, let me just get Suboxone from the street. Um, only take a quarter a day, at least so I'm not sick, so my baby is, is, can get some nutrients. That, that's what I was thinking in my mind at that time. I said, at least if I can eat some vitamins, some nutrients, my baby will be fine. That's what I thought, okay? So I'm getting Suboxone off the street. Um, eventually that runs out, okay? I'm not going to go into too much detail about my drug use, I'm only gonna, I'm trying to get to the point where I get on methadone while pregnant. That's, that's the point of this video, okay? The other drug use and my addiction, that is a whole separate story, okay? So I am skipping over a lot of big valid points um, that does not have to do with the methadone at all. It has nothing to do with the methadone. If you want to know about those, let me know in the comments down below or message me and I can go over big points in my life that have nothing to do with the methadone, but they're still part of my addiction. Um, in my story. Boxing just runs out. People on the street don't have it. All they have is heroin or pills. So I'm like, you know what? I can't do this. So I try to detox off of everything, okay? Like, no Suboxone, no pills, no nothing. I am so sick. I'm having these muscle spasms. The reason why I am so sick is because the baby, the fetus, was going through withdrawals. And when a woman is pregnant, and the fetus is going through withdrawals. Yeah, the fetus feels it, the baby feels it. But I am the one that's expressing what the baby, what the fetus is feeling. Like, I can't even explain to you how sick I would get. Me saying it, it, it doesn't justify it. And there's no way for me to show you um, because I don't have any video of the time. I don't have any pictures of the time. Um, it was the sickest I've ever been in my life. I was essentially bedridden because I could not get out of bed. I would fill up trash cans a day of just vomit. I would end up shooting myself. It wasn't just regular withdrawals, okay? Like a regular withdrawal for me, I already, it's bad for me, okay? Um, I've had other addicts say it, I've had doctors say it. I just, when I go through withdrawals and detox off opioids and opiates, it is very, very, very bad for me. Some people can withdraw and they're, they can still function. I cannot. Now add in the baby on top of that, I was done. I could not live my life. I could not be a mother. I could not do anything, okay? So 
Um, by this point, I go to my doctor, my OB, and by this point, I'm about four and a half months pregnant at this point, okay? From the time I found out I was pregnant at seven weeks, I'm almost five months pregnant. You know, we go through um, losing the prescription of Suboxone because my doctor found out I was pregnant. I start using off the street. The street runs out, so I start detoxing. Um, my boyfriend gets arrested, and I make a choice. I need to stop. I need to get to a doctor. I tell my OB. They refer me to the methadone clinic. I get to the methadone clinic, and I, at first I tried getting Suboxone. I fought and fought and fought. I did not want methadone because I was very ignorant to methadone, and um, people would tell me, you know, don't get on methadone, it'll ruin your life. Don't get on methadone, you'll be high and your baby will die. Um, this is what people were telling me. Um, I was very ignorant and I believe people I should not have. And the day I went to the methadone clinic, I said, can you please give me Suboxone? I want Suboxone, I do not want methadone. Um, for other reasons, they would not give me Suboxone because I took a drug test and it tested positive for methadone because the night before I went, I had taken a Benadryl because the doctor, um, I was sick, like I uh, had a very runny nose. I, like, I was just sick like with a cold. So I took a Benadryl and Benadryl, some medicines can make you pop positive, uh, test positive for methadone. Benadryl is one of these. I did not know that. Um, and let me make one thing very clear. I had never, up until this point, methadone is the one opioid opiate I had not abused and I had not taken. Ever. It, I, was, I never had access to it. I never got high off of it. I never did anything with methadone. So when I tested positive for that, I fought it. I said, no, there's something wrong. So that day, it was a 10-hour fight. I took three different uh, urinalysis tests, and they all said positive for Suboxone, which should have been, because I hadn't taken Suboxone in about three weeks. My body metabolizes drugs very slowly. So when I take a drug, it's in my system for weeks, sometimes two months later, because that's just how my body works with every drug, okay? Not just anything in specific tested positive for methadone because of the Benadryl I had taken 12 hours earlier. Had I known, I would not have taken it. That's a different story. So after fighting for 10 hours to get on methadone, they said we cannot give you methadone um, because you are pregnant and how Suboxone works, okay? If you take Suboxone, you cannot mix opioids or opiates with it. Um, for up to three days afterwards, for me and my body, I have to wait at least two weeks because you will be sent into what's called precipitated withdrawal. How Suboxone works, it is naloxone and buprenorphine. Those two medications, um, A, stop you from getting high, like I said, but B, like I said, they stop the effects of other opioids working. In order to do that, if you were to take Suboxone, um, within a very short time of taking another opioid, you would be sent to precipitated withdrawal because the Suboxone would be forcing the receptors in your brain, uh, I guess like forcing out the other opioid. And when you force it out, your body is sent to withdrawal. Being pregnant, they could not give me um, Suboxone if I tested positive for methadone because I would be sitting to precipitate it with y'all even though I knew I had not taken it. It was a liability issue on their part. So they say we can give you methadone or you can wait three days, come back, take a drug test. If you pass, we could try Suboxone. And I said, I cannot wait three days. I, I would have went to the street and I would have used, I probably would have overdosed. I said, I cannot wait. I am not that strong. Just give me the methadone. So after going to the methadone clinic that morning, fighting for 10 hours, because by this point, I'm going into three and a half weeks without Suboxone, and I am just, I'm way too sick. I could not wait not even three more days, okay? Fellow addicts out there know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've never used, or if you have used, but you've never used enough to withdraw, or if you have magically just never withdrawn, um, 
it is the worst feeling you've ever felt. Uh, people compare it to a flu. Um, it, yeah, in the sense, like, you get chills, um, you vomit, you have diarrhea. Yeah, but it's the worst tingling your skin hurts your nerves hurt is the worst feeling you will ever feel and <clears throat> you cannot wait even a day to go back and get med like you need medicine now to feel better i needed methadone to feel better so i said just give me the methadone i'll feel fine so my first dose of methadone at the methadone clinic um was 45 milligrams because usually at this specific methadone clinic every methadone clinic there's like a baseline but each clinic they do have their own ways that they work they usually start off at this clinic at 40 milligrams or i'm sorry at 35 milligrams but because i was pregnant they started me off at 45 milligrams y'all i took this methadone and i felt so good within like 10 minutes and then like 30 minutes later, I was even better. And I don't mean I was high, okay? Um, like, I had not eaten at that time in over a month. I had been sipping on Gatorade and like crackers, that's it. And even that I would throw up. On the way home, I got Burger King. I got the chicken fries and a large onion ring and a large soda. And I downed it in the car in like less than 10 minutes. I was so, I ate, I gained so much weight, okay, y'all? I went from being like five months pregnant and maybe like 175 pounds. My normal weight was 160. So I gained about 15 pounds. That's it. Um, and I was so, so skinny to I ballooned, okay, up to like 250 by the, within four months. I gained so much weight, which is good <clears throat> because I was so unhealthy, okay. I went home that day my first day on methadone not being sick and i cleaned the house i was able to be with my daughter at the time i had a six-year-old daughter um i was able to be a mom to her i was able to like give her a bath and cook her dinner and send her off to sleep and get up the next morning and i went and dosed at the clinic and then every morning because how methadone works is you take usually one dose every morning one dose every 24 hours and that holds you over it's supposed to once you get on a stable dose that your body can handle you're good for 24 hours and you should not feel sick and even whenever 24 hours later when you dose you should not feel sick you just go dose and you're, you're good um i was stable i was not sick um i did by the time i gave birth i got up to 90 milligrams from 45 to 90 so every few weeks i did go up 10 milligrams I wasn't like deathly ill like I was um, before I got on the methadone. Uh, it would just be a little things like um, I would wake up just feeling in withdrawal. The, the muscle aches, the body aches, the shakes, runny nose, yawning, um, like your jaw hurting and yawning. Those are all signs of withdrawal. It would just be little things like that. But enough to aggravate me and enough to interfere with my daily life. So I would go up 5 to 10 milligrams. Uh, methadone for me while pregnant, I noticed a huge change in his movement hit like when he was in my belly. Um, in the mornings when I woke up before I dosed, he would be very um, agitated. So he would be, I don't say he was withdrawing, but he, he was I hate to use the term feeding because he, you know, he, he's a fetus, but he would be wanting that dose of methadone to calm him down to get him stable. In return, I felt the same way because I felt him inside of me kicking and moving and wanting it. So when I woke up, I would quickly um, wash my face, brush my teeth, get dressed, head out to the methadone clinic. I would get up every day at four, get there. They opened up at five. It was a 30 minute drive one way. By the time I got there, they were open. I would dose, I would come home and I would be fine. Whenever I dosed every morning, he would calm down and he would be sleeping in the morning. So by the time I dosed, he would be nice and calm. He would wake up in the afternoon, he would be okay. And then at night he would be active. And then he would start getting active again around midnight or 1 a.m. And nothing uncomfortable, he would just be active. 
um, I would wake up the next morning and then he would be very active and irritable and I could feel it and it was just like that um, I personally would, would not be withdrawing um, I, I would be sometimes irritable but I like I said I could live my life and I could be a mother so me being pregnant and on methadone it was a very it saved my life I no longer had muscle spasms, I was no longer sick, I could eat, I could hold down food, I wasn't shitting myself, I wasn't pissing myself, I wasn't puking myself, I, I, I had the regular morning sickness because I, as a pregnant woman, I have very bad morning sickness, day sickness, night sickness, that's just me as a pregnant woman. I'm very sensitive to smells, sounds, sights, I'm just very sensitive to taste, everything. But the methadone definitely stabled me out enough to be able to live my life normally. I know a huge accomplishment, and I say an accomplishment, um, that I say I know methadone allowed me to do was be there for my daughter on her first day of kindergarten. Um, I never saw myself being there for Michaela's first day of kindergarten, ever okay ever I never saw that happening and I, I I just can't methadone allowed me to because I wasn't sick I was sober I was stable I had a clear mind mentally methadone allowed me to <clears throat> think about my life and make plans for the future in such a way I never had before and I was able to think about my life a few weeks in advance, you know, a month in advance. When I, the addicts don't do that. You know, we plan an hour, not even an hour ahead. Why well, I'm going to go get money in 15 minutes. I'll plan the rest out after that. Oh, I got the money. Let me call the dope man. He says 10 minutes, call him back. 10 minutes, yeah, you call him back. All right, meet me at this place in eight minutes. All right, eight minutes, eight minutes. What am I going to do for eight minutes? That's how addicts plan their life, okay? Being on methadone, not having to chase money, not having to chase drugs, not having to chase a high, allowed me to make plans. This weekend, let's go to the park. I started taking my daughter to the park. I started watching movies together. Things that I've never done before, ever. Okay, um, I had never taken her to a park before. She was six because I because of my addiction because I, I couldn't plan it. What if I get sick? What if the dope man calls and I have to hurry up and run and, and I miss him? What if I have a chance to make some money but I have my daughter with me so I can't do it? Sadly, that's that's what I was thinking as an addict. Um, and I no longer was doing that because of methadone. You know, I walked her into school on her first day and I was there with her and we cried and I was able to stay there for an hour dropping her off. I didn't have to rush out the door to go get high. I didn't have to rush out the door to go get money. I didn't have to even bring my phone in. That's another huge difference since um, being on methadone. I can leave a room and not bring my phone. Because I'm not waiting on money. I'm not waiting on the dope man. I'm not waiting on drugs. I don't need to bring my phone. I can have the volume up so I can hear it if my daughter's school calls or if my mom calls or my parents call. But I don't have to have it on me in my hand looking at it. Oh my God, let me, you know, if this man calls me, I need to, uh, oh, let me, let me do this. Has he called? Has he called? I, I don't need to do that. Methadone allowed me to do that. Okay? Methadone has allowed me to remove myself from situations and think rationally because I'm not irritated because I'm withdrawing. Because I'm not mad that I don't have money. Because I'm not mad that I don't have drugs. And because of methadone, I have my son here. I am very adamant that if I did not get on methadone when I did, I would have had a miscarriage. So my experience on methadone has been a very good experience. I am so happy to tell the world and be able to show the world that 
my experience is a very good experience with methadone because the stigma around methadone or being on methadone and being pregnant y'all the hate I got for starting methadone whenever I was five months pregnant I was told I was a killer I was told have fun having a dead baby in your belly I was told have fun having an addict as a son I was told your baby is gonna die I was told when you give birth he's gonna look like an addict I was told when he gives you know when you give birth he's gonna die of a seizure I was told I'm gonna come take your baby because you're a killer I had people call DCF on me oh that's a whole different story I had people call DCF on me because they thought I was still using heroin because I because they thought methadone was heroin like they literally thought they meaning uh, people in my life they thought I was using methadone to a get high and they thought it was the same thing as heroin like that you buy off the streets and they could not imagine I was getting a prescription for this so people called DCF on me, and I had DCF trying, taking my kids away from me. The hate I got for getting on methadone was so real, and nobody saw the good that was happening. And it took me a very, very long time to learn to not let those voices of the judgments affect me in my life. To this day, it's very, very hard because I lost everyone who was important to me in one way or another. Either because of drugs they overdosed and died, because of drugs they were in jail, because of drugs um, I got sober and they didn't, or I was on drugs and they left my life. I lost everyone who was ever important to me. And choosing to be on methadone, I lost a lot of people who were important to me because they thought I was getting on methadone to get high. And I've never gotten high from methadone. The dose has never been that that great that I get high. The dose has always been enough to keep me stable. Um, when I started methadone, I started a routine. And I think that is a huge part of sobriety that a lot of people don't figure out in time. That you need a routine to be sober. You can't just get sober and have nothing planned and no routine because eventually you're you're gonna be tempted and you're you're not gonna have the structure there. You know? And even if you don't slip up in the sense of using drugs, you may slip up and get into a deep depression or your anxiety will overcome you. And that is only the start of addiction. Because all, that's all you need is a little bit of anxiety to, to overtake you, a little bit of depression to overtake you. And next thing you know, it's, how can I get rid of this? It's just one pill. It's just a dub. It's just a little bit. It's okay. Well, I'm not shooting it. I'm just going to snort it. It's okay. I'm just going to sprinkle it on this. It's okay. I mean, it's just a pill. It's okay. Like, that's what you tell yourself. And without structure, that is so easy to just sneak its way into your life and methadone allowed me to have structure and not allow anything to be you know anything to sneak into my life without me seeing it coming now as i have said i was on methadone i tapered off in 2019 very successfully and then i got off everything completely for about five and a half months and i got back on methadone and i know why i got back on i know why it failed um, because when the pandemic hit, all the structure that I had set up went out the window and I had not any, I had, I didn't have a backup plan. So I got off methadone and I had a structure. Michaela went to school. I went to school. I went to work. I, I did what I was supposed to do every single morning, every single day. Um, when the pandemic hit, all that was taken away from me so quickly and... I had no structure and I was filled with so much anxiety and depression I could not leave my bed for days at a time and I felt myself slipping to a place I if I didn't make the jump when I did to get back on methadone 
if I went any deeper, I was at a point. There was it was it then or never, because I I was just going down, and there was uh, oof, there was a chance for me to jump and say I need help and grab onto that ledge. And if I kept going, I would not be here right now telling the world how I'm still sober, back on methadone and happy. Okay, you know. I would be on the streets, I would not be at home with my kids, I would not have my kids, I, it would not be pretty. So methadone, again, for the second time, was that crutch that I needed. The first time when I was pregnant, it was a, a crutch in a different way than it is now. And I'm so thankful I found it when I did when I was pregnant. I know this is very controversial. I understand the people who are against it. I understand your reasoning because I was against it before I had to get on it, before I made the choice to get on it. I was very ignorant about methadone, but more precisely, I was ignorant uh, when it came to information about pregnancy and methadone. And I just want to give any information and any facts I can. Um, I haven't said a lot of statistics in this video because this video is not about statistics. This video is about my experience being on methadone while I was pregnant. It's not about facts and statistics. I will get into a video about that. All in due time, okay? Patience is a virtue. It is coming. In the meantime, Please research it yourself, though. Re just read up on it. Get the facts. Get the information. Listen to more people than just me, okay? Listen to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Listen to all of it. Don't just say, oh, you're pregnant, so this is bad, and move on. Don't just say it, because why? Why do you say it? Why do you think it's bad? Why do you feel that way? The alternative to me being on methadone while pregnant was me being in the streets using drugs while pregnant and at the time the alternative of methadone was better for me in my life and my family and I don't have to convince anybody I'm not trying to convince anybody I just want you to see my point of view I want you to see my life and hear what I went through and hear how my experience of methadone while pregnant was a very good experience it helped me be a good mother, help me be a good person, help me be a better person, a better mother. And I will forever say that. So if you have any specific questions, comment them down below. You can email me at my business email, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, my OnlyFans. Everything is linked below. Everything is in the description box. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Do you know somebody who has been on methadone while pregnant? Were you on methadone while pregnant? Were you on any other MAT while pregnant? Are you against it? Are you for it? I want to know everyone's thoughts and opinions because I want to hear all sides. I want to hear and see everybody's viewpoints respectfully, okay? I know this is a very heated debate. It can get very heated. So with that, I ask please, please be respectful with your comments. Let's not attack people. Let's not attack each other. Okay. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hear me and hear my story and hear my thoughts. I really appreciate it. More than you'll ever know. Just sitting there hearing me. I, it means so much to me that you're just willing to hear me out. Because a lot of people don't hear me out. And that's why I'm making this, just so people can hear me. The people who choose to ignore me and deny me any right to my voice. Well, I'm putting it out there. Education is the key to helping addicts. Not judgment and not shame. 